Keep, keep from moving, you know. Uh, Nina, please stop moving. I mean, it really disrupts the class. I keep telling this every class. I have to tell this to people. You know, I always say, look, you're all sitting there in your living rooms, your bedrooms, wherever you're sitting by yourself. But we have a class of, I think, 16 people here that are meditating. And if you move, scratching, playing with the computer, whatever you do, it disrupts the energy. It really cuts right through the whole energy of the class. So please try and sit still. If, if you have to move, wait till the class is over. <laughs> please. Uh, Smidar, I'm just talking about this. Please sit still. I mean, if I had an in-person class, nobody would move. But people are sitting and they think they can move because there's nobody around them. And I'm telling you, you disrupt the whole class if you move. I mean, if it's organic movement, like the energy is doing it, that's one thing. But scratching, fidgeting, playing with the computer, getting up and leaving, it really disrupts the energy. Part of building a spiritual life is getting discipline. Discipline of how to stay focused in yourself, how to get past an itch, how to get past a complaint, how to get past all of these things, how to get stronger and all of these inconveniences that drive people crazy all day. And if one has their focus of attention in the chakra below the navel, which is the very foundation of everything I teach, you can detach yourself from a little pain, from a little itch, from a, you know, having to whatever, you know, you can detach yourself and you can stay centered. It will get you stronger. You will get stronger than all of the things that have people tearing themselves apart every day. So please, I mean, it's a really essential element to what is being taught here, the discipline of sitting still. I know in Zazen, they sit still, they have to sit still for 12 hours. If you move, there's some monk that comes and hits you over the head with a stick. You know, so the discipline of sitting still, thank God what we do isn't that fanatic. But what we do, the discipline of sitting still is really essential. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? I do, Stuart. Yes. I noticed that since I follow your class, whenever I meditate, Tears will form in my eyes. I'm not in pain. I'm not sad. I'm not distressed. Whenever I'm relaxed and letting it happen, tears will form. Tears will roll down my cheek. Joe, can I tell you, when I first started doing this meditation, I had the same situation. I mean, I'd walk out of my teacher's room. My shirt was drenched with tears. At first, I didn't know it. And then I realized I had never in my life experienced anything like was being transmitted in these meditation classes. I had never felt the kind of openness, the, the ability to feel gratitude in my heart, to be centered inside, to be able to receive this energy. It was tears of joy. It was tears of love. Thankfulness, you know? And I'm telling you, I went through this for six months. Every class, I, my shirt was drenched with tears. And then I began to realize, Stuart, this Shakti, this energy, this ability to connect with higher energy, the building of a system. There was so much gratitude in my heart that it was tears of joy. And I think that is what's going on with you, tears of joy of gratitude. I mean, other people here have had, had the same situation. And there's no pain. <laughs> there's nothing to be sorrowful about. No drama, no tragedies. Joy. 
love, thankfulness. And that touches me very deeply because my job is to give away everything I have learned in my life. That's my job. And when people have tears in their eyes and there's gratitude, I you know it just does nothing but fills me with gratitude. And I think gratitude is one of the fastest paths to getting to spiritual enlightenment. And I always say, happy people are enlightened people. <laughs> people that live every day with love inside them, joy inside them. You know, not just periodically or when, you know, they, they win the lottery or something good happens to them, but whatever's going on in life, there's joy, there's love, there's gratitude. But the very fact that we breathe, we live, we have an opportunity to open to God, to spirit, I mean, I don't know if how many of you are going to my website, but I would suggest doing it because I think this last one that I wrote is one of the most profound things I've ever written in my life. And, you know, and it's nicely written. And I, I hope you go there. It can really give you deep insights into the meditation that not only I teach, that I learn from my teacher. And, you know, and I talk a lot about this. You know, this gratitude, sense of, you know, what it means to be connected with higher energy, how we got to get past that internal swamp of anger and emotions to get to that place where there really is gratitude, there really is joy. I mean, my teacher always talked, it's like drilling for oil, you know, you got to go through you know, a mile of shale and rock and whatever to get to a pocket of oil. And we have to do the same thing inside ourselves to get to that pocket of gratitude, of joy, of love. Of, if and you, let it come if, to the surface. Can I pick up on this? Yes. Um, more and more that meditation brings a feeling of, of joy and of happiness um, I just want to be sure that it's not kind of a trap of self-indulgence, like, yeah, let's not do the work. Let's just think everything is happy and fine and peace. It is and not. Look, uh, real joy, real love can't come. Self-indulgence comes from ego. Hmm. Self-indulgence comes from the image you have of yourself and who you think you are in life. Real joy, real love comes from surrendering all of that. Letting go of any image you might have of yourself. Letting go of this ego-driven thing that's inside people, you know, that never really experiences joy. It only experiences tension and anger and wanting to do better than, you know, to be better than everyone else in the world. You know, I mean, it's nonsense. Real joy comes from surrender, letting go. So diving into this joy allows you to let go even more. Yes. Okay. And that's that's the whole key to all of this. Being nothing. And we often equate nothing with something negative. I'm talking about, you know, transcending your ego, transcending the image you have of yourself transcending the anger, the, you know, the insecurity inside, transcending judgment, transcending everything that creates only problems in the world, and getting to a place inside oneself where we can embrace life, getting to a place inside ourselves where life itself becomes the guru. And how does life become the guru if we know better than life? And nobody can know better than life. It's been around a lot longer than we have, you know? <laughs> I mean, really. So life becomes the teacher. We have to let go of our self-importance in order to listen to what life is teaching us every single day. 
I always, you know, I've said it a thousand times, you know, I'm not a guru. I gave up being a guru years ago, you know? I mean, I, the greatest, my job is to help people grow inside themselves, to build the internal strength that they can sit in front of the real teacher, which is life. And nobody can do this unless they develop a chakra system inside themselves that's strong enough to do it. Otherwise, we judge, we this, we fight, we argue, take revenge, we, you know, <clears throat> instead of just, what is this teaching us about us and what we have to do to grow every day? And the ultimate recognition is that what we see outside ourselves is nothing more or less than a reflection of ourselves. Can I pick up on that again? What we see outside ourselves, the external world, is just a reflection of our internal life. You know, in time, inside every human being, wars are going on, anger, you know, all kinds of stuff goes that we see in the world. If we change inside and transform all of that stuff, we begin to see a different world. We get past the anger, we get past the unhappiness, and we begin to see that everything in life is sacred and a manifestation of God and our teacher. And we bow to our teacher. We bow to life. Doesn't mean we become, if you'll pardon my expression, schmucks <laughs> or innocent. We have to do what I'm talking about. You need to have enormous strength inside yourself. And I think I am just grateful that I learned this. I had six years that I spent with maybe one of the greatest masters of the 20th century who trained me in this, trained me to recognize that meditation is not a spiritual life. Meditation is a tool you can use to build a system inside yourself that enables you to have a spiritual life. Because a spiritual life is you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Whatever we do is sacred. We have to have the inner strength to be able to live that way. This takes time, it takes training, it takes work. You know, and I, I always tell this to me, nobody can learn what I have to teach by coming to class here once a month. And I know it's not easy. We're sitting in front of a computer and God knows I'm not crazy about it either. But it's what's been made available. And for God's sake, there are people sitting here from four continents. I think that in itself is extraordinary. People have to learn how, I had to learn how to do this. And one of the greatest things I learned that the only person I was up against was Stuart. It's one of the greatest things I learned in life. I get past me, you know, and it just, the whole thing opens. And all meditation is about is getting past oneself. When meditating, mostly people will close their eyes. Excuse me? When meditating, mostly people will close their eyes. But do you see advantages in meditating with open eyes in front? Oh, yes. We, we live, Joe, we live every day of our lives with our eyes open. Mm -hmm. You understand? And we close our eyes. We cut ourselves off from life. Mm -hmm. And this meditation, there are two reasons. First of all, what I just said, we have to learn to be in the world and to be centered at exactly the same time. Our eyes open, we are in the world. And also in the meditation class, I transmit Shakti and it flows through me into people through the eyes. And so you have those two things. We receive the Shakti of the meditation. At the same time, we are in the world and we are centered in ourselves at exactly the same time.
this just gives us the strength to go out into the world and live in the world and to be free of the world because we're centered inside ourselves. We're connected to spirit. So is it interesting to meditate with a mirror sometimes? No, don't meditate with a mirror. <laughs> Not a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, you could use a picture of a teacher mm -hmm. instead of a mirror. I mean, I have a picture of me here. I never meditate with me. I meditate with <laughs> you. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Have patience. I do. Yes. Sorry. There's a question. Um, well, each time I'm preparing myself from for the meditation, and uh, I have my mindset to do it right and to do it to use the technique. And to focus, but each time my emotions are, you know, I feel so emotional. Well, Kali, that's your, I mean, you have emotions like an enormous ocean, <laughs> a lot of emotion. And it's one of the things you're going to have to learn to master. I mean that. And you master it by bringing your attention below the navel and then bring up the highest emotion, gratitude, love, you know? And that'll teach you to master that. You transform all of that swamp into gratitude and love. I do feel love. I do feel love and I do feel the gratitude. But I'm, I'm, I'm having an emotional that it's not just me, it's it's some other energies. It's my neighbors, it's my um, my children, it's my yes. people I meet in the street and I feel emotional for them. Yes. Well, again, yeah. it comes back to building a system in yourself where you are strong enough to be able to share compassion love with other people and other people's emotions do not tear you apart but you have to have the inner strength to do that i really mean that mm -hmm. when i was younger i had a lot of emotion I, I was really drowning in emotion and it took years of working on myself to build the inner strength to transform all of that emotion into compassion into love, into service to God, into service to a higher energy in the universe. But when you have grounding inside and balance inside, you understand you can detach yourself from other people's emotions, and then you can deal with them a lot better. I think that what... Maybe next time. It's okay. I just need to be in the meditation. You know, look, I can tell you one thing. The meditation I teach will take you to exactly what exists inside yourself. It will bring you to a place where you find the things that you have to learn to get stronger than. The things that you have to learn to transform. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't silver coat or you know put guilt on everything it takes you right to the dragon and this is the problem and this is what i have to get stronger than and then you have a you have a technique to use to build the foundation to get grounded to build the core of your being that enables you to get stronger than all these things you know that interfere mm -hmm. with your spiritual growth you can transform them into, as I said, love, compassion, to the chi, the power at the core of your being. That gives you the strength to be able to deal with all these internal dragons that exist inside, not only you, but everybody, you know? Okay, thank you.
And have patience, dear. Okay. It doesn't go away. In, you know, you've been doing this about two weeks, three weeks. Have patience. It takes time to get past all these things. Okay. Does anyone else have a question? Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, I just have an announcement to make. I, I, you know, I've been doing this meditation online now for about two and a half years, you know, and probably had one, I went to Costa Rica once for a week in two and a half years, and I need a vacation. I've been talking about it. And on Thursday, I'm going to be going away. I need to absorb everything that's taken place in these classes over the last two and a half years. And I need to do it by going to a place where I can just relax, <laughs> do something different, you know? So I there'll be no class between around the first, well, there will be a class the first, so in Europe and Israel. But uh, then until about the 18th, 19th, when I get back, uh, they won't be class, but I will have classes when I get back. So don't worry about it. This is my life. This is what I do. And this is my commitment to not only myself, but to everybody that attends these classes. So I need to take a vacation. I need to, it's been two and a half years. And I, I'm telling you, I, <laughs> it's been pretty exhausting. I mean, I'm the only one who attends every class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit tired, but it will continue into the new year. And when I come back from this vacation, it'll probably be with energy that's three times deeper and stronger and more nurturing. So there'll be class here on Tuesday and on Thursday. You know, and then after that, I'm going to be going away. So thank you. God bless you all. And I, you know, just do the work, get a picture, do the work. You know, don't, oh my God, no class. What am I going to do? I won't do it. You know, get a picture of a teacher. Sit down and do the work. It's a good thing to do anyway. And uh, understand that, you know, it's like, look, my teacher passed on. It's almost 50 years ago, you know. And he lives in my heart. He lives in my heart. He is always with me. You know, whether I see him, God, he's with me, nurturing me, helping me to grow, teaching me how to get past things and open. Same way with what I do. You know, it, you know, time, space, it has no reality. It, the place where any teacher lives and anybody that you love lives is in your heart. And if you open there, you will find what will nurture you and help to give you your life. So God bless you all. There will be class on Tuesday. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. And thank you. God bless you too. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat>